So basically what I'm going to talk to you today is about this new lay ministry of catechist that Pope Francis instituted in 2021 and which the uh, church in Ireland uh, is getting ready to launch. Um, and I'm going to be going through with you the draft national norms and guidelines that we've put together over the course of, the, of this past year. It's been a working group chaired by Bishop Kevin Doran uh, of and myself, uh, Father Billy Swan, and Sister Rose Miriam Collins uh, have been part of the writing team for this document. Um, so next slide, please. First of all, um, the Council for Catechetics, we have a new website. Uh, please uh, register for our monthly newsletter. It's religiouseducation.ie. So this is um, currently how the, the, the revamped Council for Catechetics website looks, looks like. We have news, news and events, and then there's um, uh, a link to register for our, our newsletter. So please do uh, subscribe. Uh, next slide, please. I just want to bring your attention also to this webinar series that we ran during the course of 2022. This was inspired by the new directory for catechesis that the Vatican published in 2020. Uh, we have nine uh, recordings um, on Catholic faith formation in contemporary Ireland. Um, and they're all up on our YouTube channel, Catholic Faith Formation Ireland. Uh, so please do um, check them out. Uh, again, um, inspired by the new directory for, for catechesis. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the, the draft document as, as it currently stands. I'm really just going to be talking about the, the first uh, three sections. Uh, just to say to you that um, there's a handout um, with the key points for this presentation um, and a memo on a conference that was held in the Vatican in 2021 on catechesis and catechists for the new evangelization. Um, that's over there um, on that table with material published by the Council for Catechetics, so please do take uh, material after, after the talk. Um, and just to, to underline that um, primarily um, this is a vocational lay ministry, and it's important to emphasize that not everyone who has a catechetical ministry need, needs to be formally instituted as a catechist, okay? Um, but that's, that's on the handout. Um, so next slide, please. So we've called this document Fan into a Flame. It comes from the second letter to Timothy, where St. Paul urges him to fan into a flame the gracious gift of God which is in you. We also thought of the Irish faith tradition of how St. Patrick lit the Easter fire on the hill of Slane, a symbol of the Christian faith. And this is uh, Sean Keating's painting of uh, St. Patrick lighting the Paschal fire on the Hill of Slane. It's now in the college of, um, the library of the college, the Irish College in, in Rome. A prophecy was made at that time that this fire, once lit, would never be extinguished. We also think of St. Bridget, who was described as a woman, ever excellent, golden, a radiant flame because of her example of charity. And she is remembered in our faith tradition as a woman of burning compassion and hospitality who chose to live by the beatitude of mercy. In recent decades, the fire of faith has certainly dimmed in the Irish church. Though it may be full of embers, it still burns. And today we pray as a church that these flames of faith may burn strongly once more, ignited by a new Pentecost that will lead to a renewed church of conviction and not just of convention. Our hope is that the establishment of the ministry of catechists in the Irish Church will lead many to know Christ with the same burning love as Saints Paul, Timothy, Patrick, and Bridget. For as Saint Paul says, the love of Christ compels us. Next slide, please. So, what is a catechist? How can we defer, uh, uh, define what a catechist is? It's very simply a witness plus a mediator of the faith for the purpose of incorporating new disciples of Christ into his ecclesial body, the church. That's what it is. And um, an example of early catechists 
would be the married couple Aquila and Priscilla um, uh, who are mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles. Next slide, please. But Jesus is the model catechist. In his earthly ministry, Jesus left us a rich pedagogical example to model and to emulate. In the gospel accounts, Jesus is shown in various forms of teaching more than a hundred times. Mary Magdalene, the first witness of the risen Christ, addressed him with the affectionate term rabuni, which means teacher. Teaching was at the heart of Jesus' public ministry and his pedagogical style was animated by a deep concern for people's everyday existence. He engaged his audience with the specific circumstances of their lives and was a master storyteller who spoke to the heart of his listeners in novel and innovative ways. Jesus invites disciples to share in his work of proclaiming the kingdom of God. He summons every disciple to share in his mission, to join him in the work of educating people to embrace faith as a way of life at the service of the reign of God. At the outset of his ministry, Jesus chose 12 apostles and commissioned them to a leadership role of teaching and healing with his emerging community of disciples. These and their successors, the bishops, were to be teachers of the apostolic faith and endowed with the authority of Christ. Yet the teaching function was never limited to the 12. Soon after, Jesus chose 70 others and sent them out in pairs to proclaim the good news and to heal in his name. They were both to cure the sick and teach that the kingdom of God has come near to you. So from the mandate given to Christ, to these early catechists, we can see them as disciples who transmit the faith by word and deed. And, and a beautiful summary of this is that catechists are people who keep the memory of God alive in our time by the witness of their faith. So next slide, please. Since the initial evangelization of Ireland over 1,500 years ago, the seeds of faith have germinated and borne fruit, generation after generation. Under the direction of St. Patrick and later saints such as Bridget and Columkilla, monastic communities rooted in personal encounter with Christ in his word and in the Eucharist became the foundation stones of the local church. I think especially of Clonmac Noise just out the road here where St. Um, Pope John Paul II came to um, uh, in 1979. And beginning as centres of hospitality and learning, they also became the launching pad for the first wave of Irish missionaries to Europe, led by Saints Columbanus, Furza, Killian, and many others. This is a beautiful image of Father uh, Gerard Quirk um, in Ackle during the COVID lockdown, celebrating uh, Holy Mass at a penal rock altar uh, in, in Ackle. Through extended periods of persecution and discrimination, when faith was nourished primarily in the family circle and the community of the baptized, courageous priests and bishops risked their lives to proclaim the gospel and to celebrate the Eucharist and the sacraments whenever it was possible to gather people. Finally, at the beginning of the 19th century, Catholic emancipation saw the beginning of a new phase of growth with the building of churches and schools, the establishment of native religious congregations, and the sending out of missionaries to the ends of the earth. Over the past 50 years, the church has lived in a changing and more diverse Ireland, where Christian faith is no longer the dominant culture, and where it has become increasingly clear that the effectiveness of catechesis depends on evangelization. Today, the church in Ireland, established on her apostolic foundation, calls men and women to be co-workers in the vineyard of salvation, not only building up the chur church herself, but contributing to the establishment of civilization and the transformation of culture. As the Directory for Catechesis states, in the multiplicity of ministries and services with which the church realizes her mission of evangelization, the ministry of catechesis occupies a significant place, indispensable for the growth of the faith. This ministry provides an introduction to the faith and together with the liturgical ministry begets children of God in the womb of the church. The specific vocation of the catechist, therefore, 
as its root in the common vocation of the people of God, called to serve God's plan of salvation on behalf of humanity. Next slide, please. So the ancient ministry of catechist has been instituted by Pope Francis in this new stage of evangelization. The document Spiritus Domini and Antiquum Ministerium, promulgated by Pope Francis in 2021, formally established the new lay ministries of lector, acolyte, and catechist, open to baptized men and women. Pope Francis invites us to recognize that what is under discussion are lay ministries essentially distinct from the ordained ministry that is received through the sacrament of holy orders. The Pope writes that in the horizon of renewal outlined by the Second Vatican Council, one feels ever greater today the need to re rediscover the co-responsibility of all of the baptized in the church and particularly the mission of the laity. So as I said at the beginning, the ministry of catechist is a vocational ministry for the lay baptized who discern and respond in love to the call of the Holy Spirit to serve the church. They answer the call to serve the needs of their local faith community, primarily at a diocesan level, first and foremost as dynamic disciples and witnesses to the gospel. Candidates to this ministry are called to embody a living faith so that through the witness of their lives, the faith can be transmitted to others. Next slide, please. I think one of the most effective uh, tools of evangelization that I've seen in, in, in recent times has been this uh, series, The Chosen. Uh, it's, it's a free uh, uh, series available uh, online. Uh, it's very, very clever, and it, it presents um, uh, the story of Jesus through uh, his apostles and through their encounters with, with, with Jesus. Um, and it's, it's, it's beautifully done. And it reminds us that the proclamation of Jesus Christ and his saving work has long been proposed as a center of catechesis. The definitive aim of catechesis is to put people not only in touch but in communion and intimacy with Jesus Christ. And any formal or informal catechetical work must have Christ at its center. The church is increasingly intent on situating catechesis within the context of evangelization and the church's missionary mandate. Reiterating the well-established fact that people listen to witnesses and only to teachers if they are first witnesses. The testimony of the catechist's own life as one who has encountered Christ and become a disciple is necessary for the credibility of the mission. While catechesis clearly inv involves teaching the faith, it cannot be reduced to an academic exercise or even the communication of an abstract truth. It is first of all a sharing in the life that comes from God and an expression of the joy of having met the Lord. This poses a challenge in Ireland where school-based religious education may not always be or even be designed to be catechesis. The catechist keeps, nourishes and bears witness to the joy and new life that continually flow from his or her experience of the goodness of God in a personal encounter with Jesus. So we can say that the catechist is an icon of Christ the teacher, who has the twofold task of transmitting the content of the faith and leading others into the mystery of the faith itself. So the first task is that of the teacher, the second that of the mystagogue, but in both Christ is the model. Christocentricity in, in catechesis also means the intention tran to transmit not one's own teaching or that of some other master, but the teaching of Jesus Christ, the, the truth that he communicates, or to put it more precisely, the truth that he is. So every catechist must be able to say honestly, my teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. The catechist is someone who also accompanies others on the journey of faith. As the directory for catechesis states, the catechist is an expert in the art of accompaniment, has educational expertise, is able to listen and enter into the dynamics of human growth, becomes a traveling companion with patience and a sense of gradualness in docility to the action of the spirit. The reference to the traveling companion brings to mind the image of Jesus who walked with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and as they went, explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. 
And in the Irish tradition, we can think about the concept of the Anamkara, or soul friend, which developed in the monastic tradition um, as someone who was close to us on the pathway of life and disciple, discipleship. This is who the catechist is called to be, an expert in humanity who knows the joy and hopes of human beings, their sadness and distress, and is able to situate them in relation to the gospel of Jesus. So, ways of serving. Um, essentially, with this ministry, um, the vocation uh, is discerned with the church, and it is the bishop, the chief catechist in his diocese, uh, who gives the uh, instituted catechist a public mandate. Uh, and this can be for a certain period of time. So you're instituted for life. Um, the uh, age is from 21 upwards, so in, in terms of entry into formation, but there's no upper limit to the exercise of the ministry. Uh, so you're instituted for life, but um, th the bishop gives you a public mandate, and that can be for a certain period, uh, one to three years. And ideally this will to collaborate with clergy uh, and the bishop. The introduction of the ministry of catechists in the Irish church will strengthen the parish community as a necessary locus for faith formation. Next slide, please. A priority across the island of Ireland is to develop and increase the capacity of parish communities to contribute to the faith formation and sacramental preparation of individuals and families including those who have never been evangelized or those who have drifted away from the practice of faith. While acknowledging the tremendous work done in Catholic schools, the parish needs to be central rather than peripheral to the formation of children in the Catholic faith, supporting the role of parents as the first and best teachers of their children in the ways of faith. The task of engaging parents more fully in their own faith journey is acknowledged to be of vital importance for the faith formation of children and the strengthening of parish life. I think what we're going to see in the, in the coming decade is an increasing shift of sacramental preparation uh, uh, out of schools and into, into parishes uh, within the next 10 years. Finally, some catechists may be able to facilitate or themselves provide religious education and faith formation of children uh, at parish level. And of course, there's lots of opportunities in terms of uh, adult faith formation, which was identified in the recent uh, national uh, synthesis of, of the Synod as, as an area for further uh, development. Okay, so what's next for the ministry in Ireland? This is in the next one to two years. Um, the publication of the national norms and guidelines for the ministry uh, will be uh, this year. I'd encourage you to, to read it when, it, when, it, when it's published uh, um, uh, this year. Uh, discern if you're attracted to this lay ministry, if this is something that, that maybe is calling you. Um, speak to your Dawson vocations director or spiritual director, um, and then write a formal letter to your bishop requesting admission to the ministry. That's how it's going to work in terms of uh, the official institute ministry. That's in the next one to two years. Uh, next slide. So what, what can you do now? So I know many of you are already involved in, in parish uh, groups and, and, and parish activities. Um, this is just one idea um, of, of something that, that you can do. Um, so I recommend establishing a parish cell of 12, 12 people with a mix of expertise. This is coming from the Lausanne movement and it only takes one person in the parish to do this. So um, if you want to start this, your role is then to choose 11 others in your local area, but you're, you're the, the, the leader. Um, and meet monthly to pray and discern together. Um, this can be a time of hospitality, of so socialization, but there, sh there should be uh, uh, prayer and, and, and reflection. Uh, and then coming out of that, um, decide on concrete mission projects in your local area. So this could be um, getting involved with the, with the local Vincent de Paul, uh, visiting the elderly, the sick, um, doing organizing local pilgrimages in your area, um, 
whatever that is, but concrete actions um, that you can go out. Um, and then the idea is that we can create a national uh, network of spirit-filled evangelizers uh, so that when we launch the, 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 the ministry of catechists, we can tap into this network that is already established, that we have people that are really committed to evangelization uh, in our local communities. And please let me know uh, how you get on, and it'd be great to have a database of, of, these, of these communities that we can keep in touch uh, with, with one another. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, recommended documents, re resources, I'll share this with Tom, so if you'd like a copy of this uh, presentation, um, uh, we, it, it can be emailed to you. Uh, that's just linked to the Modo Proprio uh, Antiquium Ministerium. It's a very short document. It's, it's worth, worth reading. Um, there's uh, another document from uh, uh, the Vatican. And then I highly recommend uh, this resource, The Effective Catechetical Leader. It's a series of six books um, on various aspects of catechetical leadership um, that's going to be very useful uh, for you in your role as catechist and in terms of uh, evangelizing the culture. Thank you.